Hey, what's up, y'all? This is William, the Permaculture Consultant, and today we're going to be planting tomatoes and peppers. Now, for the beginners, there's going to be some helpful tips for your tomatoes and pepper plants, um, some do's and don'ts, and some uh, things to increase productivity. But uh, yeah, it's also an interesting day because today is also the uh, eclipse. I have a timer set to go off so I can helpfully get some uh, recordings of it. It's been well, this is about as clear as it's been all day. Early this morning, about 30 to 45 minutes before sunrise, they were out there spraying like crazy. They had chemtrails just up there dissipating. You can even see a couple in the background right there. They're just slowly dissipating. Uh, unlike Tennessee, Texas did not make that illegal. Probably won't get much footage of the eclipse, but we'll see. If I do, you'll see it. If I don't, then you'll still probably see it. But today I'm gonna be planting tomatoes in this bed right here. Now, if you remember, I did seed this bed with a cover crop of clover, and it's coming in pretty nicely. It's nice and thick, and it's all the way down most of these beds. There's a few bare patches. Um, if you start looking closer, like right there, there's a bare patch there. There's a bare patch there, and there's quite a few weeds popping through, but that's I'm not too concerned with that. Now, if you remember, bed one was the carrot bed. Absolutely none of those carrots popped up, I don't think. Well, actually, oh wow, some of the carrots did actually pop up. I honestly thought that they all just failed to germinate, but as I pull this up, hold on, there we go. Wow, that's actually crap. Well, I'll see how well those guys do. Uh, that's a change of plans there. I really did not expect these carrots to survive or make it at all. So the plan changed. Um, I thought that none of the carrots survived in this bed right here. But if you look over it a little bit, you can see this darker green line right here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Those are carrot tops that are coming up through the clover. So this did way better than I was expecting. I haven't been paying this bed any attention. And as you can see down this way, no, they're even popping up through all that. Wow. There's a weed right here that looks like carrot as well. It's not, you can see the root is completely different. Uh, not all of this is carrot through here, but as you push this stuff to the side, you can actually see real carrots germinating underneath and like popping up. All right. So I'm not going to destroy this bed. I'm going to see what carrots actually pop up. Um, wow, they did not do bad. That's wild. Remember, at the beginning, whenever I planted this garden, I put in absolutely zero effort on the carrots. All I did was sow them, uh, water them, I think. I may not have even watered them when I sowed them. I don't know. It was more of an experiment, and I wanted to see if they would do well with absolutely zero attention. And it seems like they're doing well. Now, remember, I'm keeping track of all of this through the app Gardenate. This bed right here is the kale and beets bed. The beets did not do as well as I was hoping. The carrots are actually, believe it or not, are doing better than the beets did. Um, the beets are very, very slow to germinate right now. There's really only a few clusters of the beets that are actually surviving. Like right here, here's some of the beets that are popping up through the clover. Um, the kale is obviously doing well. You can see the, the greener patches down the middle. I did the kale down the middle. And then I did beets on either side of it. And that's the carrot bed right here. This one is the onions and the garlic and the shallots. Uh, this bed right here. And then over here on this end, I did the sunflowers. Those are popping up just fine. No issues there. This is the perennial bed. These are the, there's a blueberry here. There's the dill right here. There's more dill. There's a blueberry right here. Um, there's another, there's a strawberry. Oh, snap, I got a strawberry. Oh, look at that. Oh, you can't see my hands in the way. But look at that. I got a strawberry already. Dang. That's awesome. It's still early. I got a tree right here that's just now putting on leaves. This is the pear tree. Uh, I got another strawberry here. Let's see if it has any strawberries on here. Oh, it's got some growing. Look at that. Dang. Y'all, you have no idea how little effort I put into this garden over here. Seriously. Like very, very little effort. And this comfort, this uh, clover, everything I planted for the most part is blowing up despite what I thought was going on. Here's a mimosa here. This is a, uh, 
um, nitrogen fixing tree. I got it planted here in between that pear and this peach, I believe. Yeah, this is a peach right here. Um, it's still not putting on leaves yet. Most of my peaches haven't put on leaves yet. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on over here. This is a perennial bed. Got another, oh snap. I got a full blown strawberry. Oh, I'm gonna save this for the baby. So the baby is starting to eat foods now. Um, this is gonna be her very first strawberry ever. That's wild. That's gonna be cool. She's been eating bone sauce and stuff like that. I'll have to figure out where um, on the timeline she is with her foods and whatnot. But if she's able to eat strawberries, this is gonna be, oh snap. Look at this. There's another strawberry. Oh my goodness. These two whole strawberries right here. I need to start paying more attention to this garden. If she can eat strawberries, I'll be sure to put it in this video and show you guys. I got another strawberry here, dang. But what, what on earth could be better for her gut biome than eating a strawberry that was grown in a very healthy soil system? That's gotta be a fantastic start to her gut biome. Matter of fact, I'm gonna call Emily right, right now and see if she can eat the strawberries. Never mind, she's not old enough. She can't eat strawberries yet. Oh well, it's very sweet, very good strawberry. She's missing out. Oh well, there'll be more. And that's not even the point of the video. This one over here is the potato bed. And uh, this one, the potatoes are popping up. Um, so that's good. And then the next bed is another sunflower bed. You can see all those light green patches. Those are sunflowers. The next bed is empty. And the bed after that is another perennial bed. So the bed down there, I'm going to be planting sweet potatoes in. So I'm going to save that bed for later. Um, this bed, now I got to figure out where I'm going to put my dog on tomatoes. Okay, so here's the decision. Most of my beds are taken up. I thought the carrots failed back there. And that's where I was going to put my tomatoes. But since they're not failing, I'm going to go ahead and use this bed that I was intending for the sweet potatoes um, for the tomatoes and peppers. And by the time the sweet potatoes are ready to plant down here, I'll have a better idea of how well uh, the carrots are doing in here. Whether or not I need to leave this bed alone and let them go ahead and grow up. Or if I should go ahead and just nix them and just... Uh, plant sweet potatoes. So that's the plan. I'm switching beds. And you can see some comfrey growing up right there, popping up. After all these years, it's still popping up. All right, so before I even start planting the tomatoes, I need to get a system set up so the tomatoes can stay upright. And that method I'm gonna use, or the method I'm gonna use to basically stake these or trellis these is the Florida weave method. I'm just gonna tap these guys in the ground, get them pretty deep. Um, I have a mixture of tomatoes. Some of them are determinate, some of them are indeterminate. Determinate, they're gonna grow to a specified height or bushiness and then stop growing. Indeterminate means they just keep on going and going and going. Um, and I have a mixture of all, or both of those, so I'm not using different methods for each variety. I'm just going to use the same method and see how it goes. Alrighty. Last two broke. I got some alternatives. This is part of a mimosa that I just trimmed the other day and then turning into steaks now. Maybe tap this one in a few more times. There we go. And now I'm going to tie, not around this end, this end, I'm going to do a round turn with two half hitches. But I also need to lower it to the ground because these guys are starting off early. Now I'm gonna run this down to the other one. Now what this does is gives me a channel to plant my tomatoes in between. And as they grow up past this, I'll add more horizontal rows and it goes all the way down. Now these are the tomatoes I'm going to be planting. These guys are the uh, homestead tomato. Um, I've got some marigolds as well. They'll go around the outside. They don't need the Florida weave, so I won't waste any 
uh, space on those. Got some of the celebrity tomatoes, and I just got these from my local nursery, um, my local greenhouse. They didn't have very many varieties. Got some Roma tomatoes as well, um, early girl tomatoes, and those are all the tomatoes I got. I'm not a big fan of tomatoes, believe it or not. Um, so these are mostly tomatoes I'm growing here for for other people for a large part <laughs> um but i also got a bunch of peppers now these guys are the red sweet uh peppers orange bell peppers uh what else did i get some uh cayennes uh, more cayennes um yeah i got a variety of the peppers and then also got some of these uh watermelons right here and i think i got another yeah there we go some more watermelons and then maybe a thing of cantaloupes. I'm realizing now I don't have the space for all the plants that I bought. So we'll have to figure this out. <laughs> but we'll start with the tomatoes. We'll get them knocked out first. Now the first ones I'm gonna do, like I said, are the celebrity tomatoes. There is a rosemary plant right here. So I'll have to dodge that a little bit. And remember, I'm keeping track of all of this on my Garden 8 app. First thing I'm gonna do is pull up my tomato and if I see any fruiting clusters or suckers or anything like that on here then I'll go ahead and cut them off but regardless I'm going to cut off using this little handy dandy uh, Swiss Army knife I found out these tend to work best in the garden um, I'm just going to trim off all of these guys now the cool thing about these bigger stems is that you can transplant those into another one of these little pots right here if you have any potting soil and grow more tomatoes now um, i was thinking about doing that but honestly i don't have the space for them so i'm not going to be doing that but that's what my tomato looks like now um, and now that it's you know trimmed back and everything i only want to remove enough clover for this itself uh, for this tomato itself anything else I, I want the clover to act as a ground cover and i'm going to plant this tomato deep all that stem that i just buried down below is all going to produce roots so it's going to make a more established root system for this tomato whenever we start hitting like the hotter drier seasons of the month or of the year um, but i want to try to keep as much clover here and low growing and living as possible this uh lower trimming also helps to remove any of the uh, excess moisture that's in this area. Now, there, is, there are a lot of plants here, so it doesn't ventilate as well as tomatoes probably would like. So removing these lower branches is definitely gonna help in keeping the blight off these tomatoes. So 12 inches, remember measurements on your hand. We're removing just enough clover to get this guy planted. There we go, two down and uh, just a few more to go. I'm definitely gonna run out of garden space before I get all these tomatoes planted. So I'll have to find other locations for the rest of these plants. I'm gonna get all these guys lined out and then, uh, then I'll come back through and plant the rest. All right, now I'm out of space. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys planted and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do about all the extras. The first peppers I'm gonna be planting, let's take inventory of what I have right here. So the hot Tabasco pepper, what is this? Another mucho nacho pepper, pimento, um, cayenne, orange bell peppers and uh these are the red sweet bell peppers these are for my wife mostly she loves like bell peppers in general and then these are for just basic culinary uses i want to dry some of these cayennes right here i do want to dry those and keep those through the year but i'm gonna go ahead and start planting these i'm gonna start with these uh these guys right here, the mucho nacho peppers, these guys are getting planted on the outside. If I start seeing any issues of like blight or it's not draining well enough, then I'll go ahead and start pruning some of these peppers back. But I don't think that's gonna be the case. Um, 
Now with these peppers, uh, there seems to be like mixed reviews on whether or not you want to prune the lower leaves and bury the peppers deep. If you do that with the peppers, the only place they're gonna grow roots are where like the leaf node is, like where it starts growing another branch. Um, so it's not as beneficial with the tomatoes where that whole stem is gonna turn into roots. If you over prune with your peppers, then they can actually do a little worse for you. So careful with the over pruning on your peppers. They're not the same plant as tomato, basically. Uh, and then they're gonna go around the outside. Another one. Just pull a weed and plant a pepper. Anything like this, I was telling you earlier, anything like this, these tiny little leaves, just go ahead and pull those off. They're not necessarily doing the pepper any favors. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put this on the opposite side of what I did the other ones. So, there we go. I should also say some of these areas where the clover has been grown for a while and where it's really established, there's a huge difference in the soil structure. Like some of the, some of the bare spots, like the bare patches that don't have the, um, like over there, the ones that don't have the clover or just the native weeds, those ones are really compacted on the very surface. The one, the area that's covered in clover is very, very dark and luscious. And like, this is what, this is what I'm talking about. That's crumb structure. That's exactly what you want in your soil. And that's just one season of having this clover out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant these tomatoes over there and I'll do individual stakes along with the Florida weave method. And then we'll have a direct side-by-side -side comparison to see which one is actually doing better, the stakes or the Florida weave method. All right, so I have nine, I have nine total plants left over to plant on this side. Uh, and they're gonna be planted on either side of the Florida weave. So let's see how many stakes I got. There's one. Two. And there we go. And I'll go ahead and grab one of my tomatoes. Using my handy dandy Swiss Army knife. If you guys don't have one of these, you ought to get one. They're just, I mean, they're cheap enough so where you don't feel bad if you like damage it or get it super dirty or it gets a little gritty. Um, but they're just awesome, awesome knives. There we go. Put this off to the side. If you haven't noticed on this channel, I am pretty fond of knives. If you guys have any knife suggestions, link them down below. I love checking out new knives and stuff like that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and plant this right next to the stake. And I'm not gonna plant these as deep because I want enough to like tie to the stake. In fact, these guys might not even be big enough to tie to the stake yet. So maybe I'll just wait on that in general. There we go, there's one planted. Yeah, I'm not gonna tie these to the stake yet. But as this grows up, I'll then tie it to the stake um, and it'll be good to go. Now you might be wondering, if you're not familiar with the previous videos, like why do I have clover planted in my garden? Why, do, why am I creating competition between the plants that I just seeded? Holy, Swiss Army knife got me. <laughs> All right, now I'm about to literally rub some dirt in it. Um, but anyway, uh, you might be wondering like why am I creating this competition between my plants that I'm wanting to grow fruit and stuff and the plants that I'm using as a cover crop. And it's not a competition at all. Um, this clover, this ground cover is constantly feeding the soil microbes and allowing them to reproduce, multiply, and provide what these more favorable plants like these tomatoes want and need. So it's not a competition at all. They are actually occupying different layers of what you would call a forest. Um, this ground cover is acting, or this clover is acting as the ground cover. Um, and this, in this particular case, this tomato plant is acting as maybe a shrub or uh, in some instances, even a vine layer, um, but they're occupying different spaces. Now, if I had two ground, uh, ground covers planted right next to each other, uh, like I do in the summer with the cowpea and the buckwheat, then they are in kind of 
uh, competition with each other, but I don't really care which one wins. They're both going to be beneficial to my application. So don't be afraid of using a ground cover in your garden to keep everything else fed and multiplied and happy. On a serious note though, that Swiss Army knife is super sharp. All I did was close it, thought my finger was clear. Uh, it was not completely clear and literally the tip just barely swiped my finger and there's like a little, it doesn't even hurt. That's how sharp it is. <laughs> it just clean cut, but yeah, you should still get them. They do not have locks. So keep that in mind. Um, if you're in England, then you can't have a knife that locks anyway, which is in my opinion, a more dangerous knife. It's a multi-purpose little trowel right there. Also a, a state sale find. It's super handy. I love going to estate sales. You can find so many useful tools out there for super cheap. I think I bought this in like a little, um, oh, the thing with the, like a garden fork cultivator type thing um, for 50 cents for the pair. Something, something cheap and ridiculous like that. But it's a really good, if you're starting out, it's a really good place to find some old reliable tools before they started planning for planned obsolescence. Um, and you can find some really good tools, especially if you know how to rejuvenate some of the old ones and bring them back to life and repair them. And then the last tomato right here. All the tomatoes are planted. So let's see what I have left. I've got these marigolds here, and then I've got my like melon plants over here. Now, since the spacing is so tight on this bed with the tomatoes and the peppers, I'm going to go ahead and plant the marigolds on this edge of the perennial bed over here. And then on this edge of the sunflower bed right here. These sunflowers are doing well. It's just that some of these spots have not germinated. So the areas that have not germinated, like right here in this middle, and there's another gap section right here. Um, I'm going to fill those with marigolds and that'll still be close enough proximity to be beneficial to my tomatoes and peppers. All right. So I got all but one of these little six packs planted of the marigold so far. Um, I thought I was recording, did not hit the record button. I don't know what happened there. And then like, while I thought I was recording, I was saying a bunch of awesome stuff. I was like, Oh, this is going to be an awesome video. This is going to be, you know, super informative and all that stuff. And then I come back and check and there's absolutely no footage from, all of that, all of that stuff that I was saying. So quickly, just a little recap, it's not gonna be anywhere near as impactful or anything like that. What I was trying to say is that I'm planting the marigolds over here on this side, which is this uh, tomato side of the perennial bed. And I'm planting marigolds on the sunflower, the tomato side of the sunflower bed as well. And I'm filling in any missing spaces or gaps with these marigolds. Now I'm not spending too much time thinking about, oh, does it fit here? Or is it gonna outcompete something else? Um, I'm really not concerned with that at all. Like I've stressed in previous videos, the only thing in this garden that I'm concerned with is the soil life. If you can control the soil life in your garden, then you have control of everything else. And I was also uh, remarking on how amazing the soil is with just this single season of clover as a ground cover. Um, it has not been a competition at all in this garden. It has only been a benefit to the surrounding plants around it. Uh, point proven, that's doggone carrot over there. There's no way those carrots should survive. No carrot is that doggone Harvey hardy. That's not like the perennial wild carrot that takes like what, four years to grow or something. Um, those are annual, literally like old seed packet carrots and they still popped up. And I think a lot of it has to do and that this is, I am not by any means tooting my own horn here. Um, I didn't do anything to make those carrots survive. All I did was put down a ground cover. The ground cover is what took care of those carrots and let them germinate and let them pop up. And I'm excited to see if I actually get some full blown carrots later this year. I was about to delete them off the Gardenate app because they didn't work, but I'm glad I checked out first. Um, and all else fails, if they don't pop up and turn into legitimate carrots, at least they germinated. And that's been like half the issue I've ever had with carrots is getting them to germinate. Cause I ain't about to put no, down no boards or anything like that. Um, but I'm just filling in the other empty spaces over here on this sunflower bed. And then the last thing I'm going to do is plant those melons over there. We're also, I think, getting closer to the eclipse. In about an hour, we'll have the eclipse. Does anybody else notice marigolds smell like weed? 
this whole time until I started mar planting the marigolds, I thought my neighbors down the way were, were smoking weed and it was just blowing on this way. But turns out it was the marigolds the whole time. Now to be fair, it could be my neighbors as well at the same time and just like a compounding effect of weed smell going on over here. But marigolds apparently smell like it as well. Now what I have left are these melons right here. I have the uh, Charleston Gray Watermelon, the Hale's Best Jumbo Cantaloupe, and also the Black Diamond Watermelon. And I'm going to be planting those in this swale mound over here because, as you can see, there's plenty of bare soil and bare dirt. So these are the Black Diamond Watermelons right here. And I'm going to try to loosen up the soil around it as much as possible. It's not like I'm damaging good soil over here. This is super compacted clay. And it is about to rain, like right after the eclipse. It's odd, like right after the eclipse, it's supposed to start like pouring and it's gonna be pouring for the next few days. So um, we'll see how that goes. But just bury this stuff back in, cover it up, tamp it in a little bit. And then, just in case that one fails, I'm going to go ahead and plant another one within pretty close proximity to it. That way, if one of them dies, one of them fails, I can just, you know, I haven't lost. I still have plenty of space left. All right, those guys are in. This area right in between here is actually what I'm talking about. So this is the perennial bed right here. The bottom one and this over here is the area for the greenhouse um, in the future, maybe. Uh, and then I also have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight comfrey plants planted. So on down here, I'll go ahead and just plant my cantaloupe. And here is the aftermath. This is everything I planted over here and over there today now the only thing left to do is go ahead and kick on this tank kick on this pump it's just run by battery uh oh look at that look what just showed up there's a hummingbird right there oh he's drinking out of the marigold i just planted that thing look at him <laughs> that's awesome i just planted that marigold and there's already a hummingbird coming out here where'd he go i don't know where he went but that's freaking awesome so we've got about 20 minutes until the eclipse is supposed to happen. I'm going to go ahead and plug my phone into the charger. Um, there are some thicker clouds that are rolling, oh, that are rolling in right now. Um, but we'll, we'll do the best we can. If it, if it ends up going bunk, then you can just go look at the CGI photos. I mean, the, the live stream from NASA. Now, one thing they have been doing all day are those streaks. Like since, since before the sun came out today, they were putting these streaks all through the sky, like an insane amount. You can see three lines right there. You can see a fourth one in between that gap of the trees. There's just these streaks everywhere in the sky. And it was almost like they were trying to battle natural uh, weather patterns because Monday's forecast, sorry, I'm putting this battery in here right now. Monday's forecast was like back and forth, whether or not it was supposed to be rainy um, or gonna be sunny or whatever, so. Who even knows? What's really weird though is that this camera keeps shutting off. I keep hitting record and then it'll just stop recording and shut off on me. It's charged. It's completely, just so you guys can see, there's the, well, there's the battery level right there. Like charged. Then I'll hit that, then I'll hit record. There we go. Now let's just see what happens. There we go, there's totality. Like, this is how dark it is right now. That's what the sky looks like in the opposite direction. And that's what a total eclipse looks like. A 
That's crazy. All right, there we go, guys. Just planted uh, tomatoes on a full eclipse day. If you guys have any permaculture consultation needs, just hit the links down below. My email is down below. Um, if you have any permaculture Q&A submissions, then comment down below with the hashtag permaculture Q&A at the beginning of your comment. And uh, yeah, there's a full eclipse. Not very often do you get to do a YouTube video planting tomatoes during a full eclipse. But yeah. All right, I'm going to get on out of here, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was an entertaining video for you, definitely a one-of-a-kind video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.